Today we're actually on page 256, and we're going to be studying the topic of cleanliness and trips to foreign countries. So, behavior. Body, clothes, food, water, and lodging should all be kept clean, as cleanliness is conducive to purity of mind, health of body, and achievement of end. Cleanliness should be observed so that all dirt is removed. The service of mother, father, preceptor, and guest is called Dev Puja, or worship of the elders. It is the duty of a man to do all the actions that end to the well-being of the world and to renounce all that is harmful. Nobody should associate with ungodly, debauched, faithless, untruthfulness, selfish, deceitful, fraudulent, or evil-minded persons. Good conduct means to be ever in company with the truthful, pious, and benevolent persons. Traveling in foreign countries and voyages. The inhabitants of Aryabhartha do not soil their conduct by going to countries outside Aryabhartha if they preserve his internal and external purity by following the rules of conduct such as truthfulness. His conduct is never soiled in whatever country he may live if he does not do evil things. Even in the Aryabhartha, if he does evil things, he will fall in character. Here's a historic example. Once Vyasa was living in Patala, which is now called America, with his son Sukha and his disciples. Sukha asked his father a question. In order to get his, sorry, his signs of self only so much or more? Vyasa deliberately did not answer the question. Instead, he told Sukha to get his teachings verified, so he said, Oh my son, go to Mithila and put your question to Janaka. He will satisfy you on point. Sukha set out from America to Mithila. First, he came to Haribarsha and those countries which lie northeast, north, and northwest of Himalayas. Haribarsha was so called because the people of those countries had red faces like those of monkeys. Haribarsha is now known as Europe. Then he came to the land of Hunas, or Jews. From there he went to China, and from China he went through the Himalayas, and he arrived at Mithila. Another example is Sri Krishna and Arjuna went to Mithila. Patla, or America, in Asvatari, or steamer, and from there they brought sage Udulaka for the Yajna of Yudhishthra. Then again, Dharastra was married to the royal princess of Gandhara, now known, now known as Kandara. Madri, the queen of Pandu, was the daughter of the king of Iran. Arjuna married to Ulopi, the daughter of the king of Patla. How could all this be possible if these people did not travel to foreign lands? Sea voyages. In the Manusmriti, there is a mention of tax on ships. There is clear proof that people of this country used to go to different islands. When King Yudhishthira performed Rajasugya Yajna, Pima, Arjuna, Nakula, and Sadeva went in all four directions to give invitation to all the rulers of the world to prepare for this celebration. In ancient times, the people of Aryabhartha traveled all over the globe for political and trade purposes. Those people who did not hesitate to go to other lands came in contact with various people, learned their customs and manners, expanded their kingdom and businesses, acquired boldness, and imbibed their merits, shook off their own weaknesses, and thus became more powerful. Those who eat flesh and drink wine have their bodies, viral fluids, and other bodily elements corrupted. In coming in contact with them, there is a risk of the artists contracting those evil habits. But if they accept their good points and leave their bad points, there is no harm in associating with them. Good conduct comprises of the abandonment of infatuation, aversion, injustice, falsehood, and other evil habits, and imbibing nonviolence, love, benevolence, and gentleness, etc. It should be noted that dharma is the concern of our soul and dutifulness. If our actions are good, there is no harm in going to foreign lands. A country cannot prosper without extending trade in only their own country, and trade and rule of the country are in foreign hands. Religious impostors think that if they would educate the people and allow them to go to foreign lands, that the later would become wiser, would not fall into the meshes of their fraud, and the former would consequently lose their importance as well as their livelihood. It is why they impose restrictions on interdining and fashion of dress and object to foreign travel. Next week, we will study on two different kinds of food. Thank you.